This video is sponsored by Sega. Business is booming in the tiny little retro console market, mostly because all of those children who grew up playing those games are now full grown man children who can spend their own money however they want, mom. But also because it's not easy to play a lot of these retro games. Sure, you could track down the original hardware, but good luck playing that on a modern TV and at a decent resolution. Now you would think that this was Nintendo that started this trend, but it was really Sega who licensed out their brand to manufacturers way early on with various degrees of success. But this now is exactly what we've been wanting to see from Sega. This is the Sega Genesis Mini or Mega Drive Mini, depending on where you are in the world. Six-year-old me is very excited to be a part of this right now. First of all, this thing is gorgeous. It's probably the best looking classic console. The attention to detail is amazing. It has a mock cartridge slot. The headphone volume slider actually slides, although there's no headphone jack. The reset button is what brings you to the main menu and there's even a mock expansion slot on the bottom. Why does it have all these extra slots if they're not functional, I hear you asking yourself. Well, it's because Sega actually makes a little tiny Sega CD, 32X, Sonic the Hedgehog cartridge, and a Sonic and Knuckles cartridge. Sonic and Knuckles isn't actually on the Sega Genesis Mini, but they made that just to add the ridiculousness of the whole thing. This is called the Mega Drive Mini Tower of Power. It looks like it's Japan only, but you can get it on Play Asia if you're interested. And if you are interested, you'll find a way to get it. If you're even crazier, the Japanese collector's edition of the Mega Drive Mini comes with 22 more cartridges in a frame. Please ask your wife before you purchase this. I don't want to be held responsible. What I have here is just the base unit. In the box is the unit itself, an HDMI cable, a USB power brick, a micro USB cable for charging, and two full-sized three-button Sega Genesis controllers that plug in via USB. So right out of the gate, this console comes ready to play with a friend. Feel free to pass that other controller off to your little brother so he can pretend to help out as Tails. Oh man, you're so lucky. You get to play as Tails. That's so cool. Me? Nah, nah, I couldn't play as Tails. You're way better at it. Oh, sorry, I ran too fast. It feels identical to how the original controller feels, and the cable is just as long, which is great because long cables are rare to see these days. The Japanese version comes with the six button controller. If you'd like the six button controller for yourself, Retrobit makes officially licensed six button Sega Genesis controllers specifically for the Sega Genesis Mini. They also make Sega Saturn controllers that work on the Sega Genesis Mini if you want a little bit of an upgrade. If you're looking for a wireless option, 8-Bit Do makes six button controllers that come with a wireless dongle that plug right into the front of the Sega Genesis Mini. I wish I could recommend this. They say it's for the Sega Genesis Mini, but I tried two different ones and they didn't work at all. The dongle's in, it just won't resync. I don't understand. I guess uh, that's what you get for not being officially licensed. Looking pretty should not be the only reason that you purchase this thing. I know I'm guilty of buying a collector's edition and just leaving it on the shelf to rot forever, but the real draw here are the games. The Super Nintendo Classic came with 21 games. The PlayStation 1 came with 20 games, and we all know how well that turned out. The Sega Genesis Mini comes with 42 games. Yeah, I'm not playing all those. I'm not gonna read off the list. Instead, I'm just gonna flash all the games on screen. Ha! And I'll just talk about the notable ones. Some of these games are classics. Some of these games you've probably never heard of before. And some of these games you couldn't have heard of before because they didn't exist. Darius is a Sega Genesis Mini exclusive. Darius 2 did have a Sega Genesis port back in 1990, but Darius 1 never did. This version is based off of a fan-made game. Darius is known for its arcade version that's played across three screens. This version, obviously, is optimized to play on just one. Tetris is not something you'd expect on a Sega console. Sega did develop an arcade version of the game. This game almost made it to the Mega Drive in Japan, but due to publishing issues, it was canned just before release. Until now, of course. Now you don't have to spend a million dollars to own your own copy. 
Mega Man The Wily Wars is another game you might not expect on a Sega console. This game did have a full retail release in Japan, and has always been on my list to collect. It's the only Mega Man game released on the Genesis. It's such a weird game too. It's a remake of Mega Man 1, 2, and 3. The graphics are bizarrely Sega Genesis looking. If you're a fan of these games, it's worth seeing how they look on here. It's like peering into an alternate timeline. Monster World 4 is another Japanese-only game. This one is in the Wonder Boy series. Super Fantasy Zone is another one we never got in the US. I'm also surprised at the licensed games the Sega Genesis Mini has, like Disney's Castle of Illusion and World of Illusion. Of course, it has the classics you should know about. Gunstar Heroes, one of the best side-scrolling bullet hell shooters, and one of the best multiplayer games on the Sega Genesis Mini. Castlevania Bloodlines, the only Castlevania game on the Genesis. Vector Man, Earthworm Jim, and possibly the best game in the entire Sega Genesis back catalog, Shinobi 3 Return of the Ninja Master. All right, fine, it's a tie between this and Sonic and & Knuckles, but if you haven't played Shinobi 3, now's your chance. Yeah, and of course this thing has Sonic 1 and 2, but everybody knows Sonic 1 and 2. The emulation on this thing is phenomenal. Development was done by a company called M2, which is the same company that developed the Sega Genesis Classics Collection for the Nintendo Switch. Not the Sega Genesis Classics Collection, it was the Sega Ages Collection. I am, uh, I'm very sorry. And that emulation was also phenomenal. You might've heard me talk about that in a previous video. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that Sega had licensed out their Genesis brand to have a mini console created many years ago. This one had a functioning cartridge slot that you could buy at Walgreens. That was done by a company called At Games. The emulation on that console was not good. When the Sega Genesis Mini was announced, it was also announced that At Games would be developing it. There was, understandably, an uproar from fans. I was one of those fans. We're getting a Mega Drive Mini. Yay! And then it took about a day for people to go, no. <laughs> because At Games is behind it. Sega heard this uproar and decided to change developers, which uh, I think was a pretty good idea if you ask me. The software itself is pretty bare bones. It has save states, which is essential these days because old games are hard. And these days we're all soft little babies spoiled by auto saves and difficulty settings. You can reach the menu by clicking the reset button on the console or holding the start button for three seconds. You can even decide to view the front of the box art or their spines. The system outputs a nice crisp 720p 60 frames per second, which is the standard for these classic consoles. If you choose to change the language settings, you will get that region's game. So if you choose Japanese for the language, all of the games will be the Japanese versions of those games, which no other classic console has ever done. So if you choose to play the Japanese version of Contra Hard Corps, you'll be able to take three hits instead of just one. Even though different regions have completely different ROMs, all of the PAL region games still run at 60 hertz, so they're not going to slow down. That's a problem that we saw on the PlayStation Classic, and a problem some games have, like the clock speed of Mega Man X, but luckily we don't got to worry about that here. There are also options to stretch the screen if you're a psychopath. The 4x3 mode lets you cycle through wallpapers for that little extra space. I just use the black one because I'm a purist. There's also a pretty good looking CRT filter if you're even more of a purist. But that's like, you know, eating vegan cookies, you know? It's not a real cookie, you know? I'm amazed at all of the work that Sega put into this little console. From the physical design of it, to the emulation, to the licensing of all of these games. The elephant in the room here is that Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles are not on this thing. But like, come on, there's 42 games on this thing. You can't have everything. Sure, there are other ways to play these games today, whether it be original hardware or not. But in my opinion, if you wanna play frickin' Wily Wars and Earthworm Jim legally on your modern TV, this is the easiest way to do it. And at $80 for a lot of these games, this is also the cheapest way to do it. And you can check it out for yourself at the link in the description below. So what do you guys think about the Sega Genesis Mini? Is this something you've been wanting to pick up? And if so, did you have a Sega Genesis growing up? Or do you just wanna go back and play all these games now because you missed out on them? 
leave me in the comments below, add me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. And special thanks to Sega for helping sponsor this video. Me and Will were Sega Genesis kids. We get made fun of a lot for not being Super Nintendo kids. But when they announced the Sega Genesis Mini and all these other YouTubers were getting advanced copies, I was hurt. But you know what? The moon's aligned and somehow fate brought Sega our way anyway. So thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks guys. Anyway, we got new videos and live streams all the time here. Our schedule's usually in a pinned tweet over on Twitter. We got Wolf Den Live, our live podcast every single Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on YouTube. That's why I got this whole setup. And of course, we got streams over on twitch.tv slash Wolf You can support us on either of those platforms. You get private chat time with us, videos like this early. You get to play multiplayer games with us once a month. But of course, the most important thing that you could do in the easiest is just subscribe to this channel. That's it. And share this video with a friend, a friend who also was a Sega Genesis kid and probably wants to get back into it playing these games. And also, why not slap a like on the video? Thank you very much. Have yourself a good one.